All right. Um, here in front of us, we have a triangle that's formed by three intersecting lines. And uh, the question before us is, is it isosceles or not? All right. Well, as it sits, it's, it's pretty simple to figure it out. I can just calculate the lengths of the three sides. I get that AB is square root of 45, BC is square root of 45, and AC is square root of 18, so two of the sides of the same length, so it's isosceles. But let's imagine for a moment I didn't have the graph, and all I had were the equations of these three lines. Would I still be able to, to figure out whether it's isosceles or not? And the answer is, yeah, sure, no problem. Well, actually, a lot of problems. It's way more work, but um, we can still do it. So what we need to do is, I'll give you an overview. We need to locate the three points, that uh, the three vertices of the triangle. And then we need to calculate the distance between each pair of vertices and see if we have any matching distances. So let's start by just finding the three vertices. An equation... The equation of a line is a statement that's true about every point on the line. So every point on this line has an x, y, uh, has x, y coordinates. And I know that if I take the y coordinate, I double it, I subtract the x coordinate, I'll always get 6 for every point on this line. And something similar is true for these. If I take the x coordinate for every point on this line, I double it, I subtract the y coordinate, I'll always get 3. And over here, on this line here, the x coordinate and the y-coordinate are always opposites. So, for example, 1, negative 1, 2, negative 2, 3, negative 3, and so on. So those are statements that are true about um, the, the coordinates for those points. So if I want to find a point that's on both lines, I need to find a pair, an x-y pair, that makes this equation true, and say also makes this equation true over here. Of several different ways to go about this, but the most efficient way is to set up and solve a system of equations. So if you're rusty on solving systems of equations, you need to go back and kind of practice that a little bit, but um, here we'll, we'll go ahead and do it. So I'm going to find point B, and I'm going to label this. I'm going to write find point B. I suppose you could call it um, the intersection of um, of A, B, and, and C, B, All right. but point B. So we're going to set up our system of equations. I have 2y minus x equals 6 for the one equation, and I have uh, 2x minus y equals 3 for the other equation. I think I need to rewrite this a little bit because I want the x's and the y's to line up. I'm going to use an elimination Type methods. Let's see. Uh, so we switch them around here. We have 2y minus x equals 6 and negative y plus 2x equals 3. So it looks like to me if I double this top equation, I'll be able to subtract pretty easily. So let's rewrite here. I've got um, 4y minus 2x equals 12 and negative y plus 2x equals 3. So now I'll add these two equations together. 4y minus y is 3y. These two cancel each other out, and we have 15. And we divide, and y equals uh, 5. And we just double check if we've done it correctly. We go up here, and the y coordinate for b indeed is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we did it right. Um, let's see here. So next we need to find the x coordinate. So I'll pick one of the two equations. I'll put a, and we'll do, I don't know, 2y minus x equals 6. We'll substitute 5 for y, or for x, sorry. Uh, add 5 to each side. 2y equals I plugged in, look what I'm doing. What a mess. I plugged in uh, 5 for x, not y. I knew something was wrong. That should be 2 times 5 minus x is 6. So that's 10 minus x is 6, which makes x equal to 4. 
which we'll go over here and check. And one, two, three, four, that works. So we've solved this and we have uh, four, five. So let's go to the next one. Let's find point, uh, let's see, C. Find point C. So our two equations now are 2x minus y equals 3. Equals 3 and y equals negative x. Okay, so here instead I think I'll do a substitution method since it's much simpler. I can just plug negative x in for y here. 2x minus negative x equals 3. That's 2x plus x, so that's 3x equals 3 or x equals 1. All right, so now that there we go. So now I've solved for 1, I just plug 1 into one of these equations. The easy one down here would be y equals negative x, so y equals negative 1. All right, so our point is 1, negative 1. Check here, we have done it correctly. 1, negative 1. So let's find the other one. Next we have uh, find point A. So now we have our two equations are 2y minus x equals 6 and y equals negative x. So we have 2y minus x equals 6 and y equals negative x. So let's go ahead and do that um, substitution thing again. In fact, I've got the negative x right here. That makes things super simple. So I'm just going to write 2y plus y equals 6. Uh, and that makes 3y equals 6, or y equals 2. And something went wrong here. Something went wrong. Because y isn't equal. Oh yeah, y is equal to 2. I did it right. Okay. So we'll go back and substitute. y equals negative x. Substitute 2 for y. 2 is negative x, so negative 2 is x. And we'll go up here and look. And yep, negative 2, 2. So A is negative 2, 2. So we found our three corners by solving three different systems of equations. And now, I need another sheet of paper here. Hold on a second. Alright, so now, now that we know where the three uh, vertices of the triangle are, we just have to find the distances from one vertex to the next will be the side lengths. And we're going to have to use distance formula because we're pretending that we don't have the graph in front of us. So, let's go here and take a look. I'll do find, um, let's see, we'll find uh, AB first. AB. And we've talked about, we've set up our distance formula in a previous video. Uh, so, distance is um, x sub 1 minus x sub 2 squared, y sub 1, y sub 2 squared. And when you're doing distance formula, by the way, it's really important. So we, now, I know we're reading our coordinates right off the graph, but we're pretending that we don't actually have the graph. So let's see, our x coordinates are negative 2 and 4. Negative 2 minus 4, plus our y coordinates are 2 and 5. It's really important to write out this square root bracket every single line. I know it gets tedious. What's going to happen is you're going to forget about it, and then you're going to get the wrong answer in the end. So let's see. Negative 2 minus 4 is negative 6 squared, and 2 minus 5 is negative 3 squared. Oops, go off a little bit there. Uh, so negative 6 squared is 36. Negative 3 squared is 9, so we get square root of 45, which we had from earlier. I'm using Pythagorean theorem. So let's find BC next. Find BC. 
So our distance is equal to, so x sub 1 minus x sub 2 squared plus y sub 1, y sub 2 squared. All right, so our x coordinates are, now we're dealing with bc, so we've got 4 and 1. So 4 minus 1 squared plus our y coordinates, we have 5 minus negative 1, 5 minus negative 1 squared. So our distance is, see, 4 minus 1 is 3 squared. So 5 minus negative 1 is 6 squared. We kind of see where, where we're headed here. 3 squared is 9. 6 squared is 36. And then d equals square root of 45. So we got that. So we found the two sides that are equal. And I guess we can stop here um, because we don't need to know that all three sides are the same length or if they're not. Two is enough. It's isosceles. Again, just to go over this procedure, if we just had the three equations and we didn't know what any of the, the corners were, what we would do is we would um, set up a, oops, here we go, set up a three separate systems of equations, one for, for each equation, for each pair of equations, sorry, and then we would solve those systems of equations to find the places where the three lines intersect, and those are the three vertices of the triangle. And then once we've done that, we'll take the points A, B, B, C, and if we had to, we'd do C and A to calculate the distances between them to see if we have any matches. And if we do, then it's isosceles. Who knows, this one could be equilateral. We already know it's not, but we could finish up the calculation and show that. All right. So there you go. That's how to determine if a triangle is isosceles or not based only on the equations of the, the three intersecting lines that form its sides.